and welcome to my channel about moving to and living in Denver, Colorado. Today is a little bit different of a theme. It is the best lakes in the Denver metro area. Let's get into it. Hey, I'm Katie Martineau, also known as The Real Estate Gal. If this is your first time tuning into this channel, thank you for visiting. I would love for you to hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so that you get notified every time I release a video, which is twice a week. I talk about all things living in and moving to Denver, whether it be neighborhoods, things to do with your family, activities, and what would be a really great fit for you. Which leads me into the topic of the best lakes around Denver. It's some really fun activities that are offered at the lake. And since we're going into the summer season, what better time than to do a video based off of that? And as mentioned, I am a licensed real estate agent in this state. So if you need help with buying, selling, or anything in between, I'm your gal and would love for you to reach out to me, whether it be call, text, or email, my information is below. All right, so in terms of the lakes that are in the Denver metro area, I picked six with a bonus, which is at the end. So these are primarily in the Denver metro area, not including the mountains. So that will be a different video. And then I also wanna highlight the difference between a lake and a reservoir. They are practically the same. A reservoir is man-made, a lake is naturally made. And because Denver is so dry, typically most of the places that I'm gonna be talking about are man-made lakes. Also the website that I found that had the definition between a lake and a reservoir, the lake definition is really just another component of the earth's surface water. So perfect. <laughs> And also one really quick note to mention is, can you swim in Denver lakes? There are a couple that you can swim in, such as Chatfield, Cherry Creek, as well as Big Soda Lake are the three that you can swim in. And then there's other water activities that we're gonna be covering once we get into those six. So the very first one, which is one of my personal favorites because I am a neighbor resident to Sloan's Lake. Sloan's Lake is located to the west of downtown Denver in the west of I-25. If you look at a bird's eye view of it, I think it looks like Gomzo from Sesame Street. Sorry to place that in your mind, but every time I see it, I can't not see it. He has a really long nose, kind of an interesting shape. But anyway, the great thing about Sloan's Lake is it's really close to the city free parking, and the lake is surrounded by a ton of different bars and restaurants that you can visit after your lake activities, whether it be walking around the lake, paddle boarding, yoga in the park, and then some of the restaurants to recommend are Joyride Brewing, there's Patio at Sloan's, there's a Target, a King Supers, a Crumble Cookies nearby, and then there's some really cool homes to look at as well while you walk around. And lastly, stellar views of downtown Denver. Lake number two, or actually reservoir, is the Cherry Creek Reservoir. Parking there is $11 for a day pass. And of course, all of the parking is gonna be subject to change based off of availability and the time that you're watching this video. But Cherry Creek Reservoir is at the intersection of I-25 and 225. So if you're ever trying to get from West Denver, let's just say Lakewood over to Aurora, it's always a really kind of funky route because the interstates dip and Cherry Creek Reservoir is one of those reasons. There is the state park park right there as well. And like I said, Cherry Creek Reservoir is really popular for its swimming. And then you can also do boating, camping, horseback riding, and it's pretty centrally located like away from the mountains. So if you're in Aurora, Parker, Littleton, Inglewood, Lakewood, even Denver, Cherry Creek Reservoir is pretty accessible based on no matter where you're coming from. Since we're talking about reservoirs that are a little bit south, we'll lead into Aurora Reservoir, which is number three. So this one is definitely located a lot more east and a little harder to get to, unless you're in Parker and Aurora. So if you know where the Southlands Mall is, keep going east and then you'll find that reservoir. There's a swim beach, there is fishing, paddle boarding, sailing, an eight mile trail for hiking and biking. And the most interesting feature of the Aurora reservoir is that there is scuba diving there. I found that out doing research for this video. I had no idea that the state of Colorado had scuba diving that wasn't in a pool. So you can take lessons there and it's a pretty cool feature. Moving on to number four, we have Chatfield Reservoir. 
I love this lake so much. I've had a couple clients that want to buy in the Highlands Ranch in Littleton area just so that they can have easier access to Chatfield. You do have to pay for parking at Chatfield and that is going to be $10 a day. And you can also get a season pass and essentially go through the express lane if you are going there pretty often. They also have a dog park, which is really cool. And there are acres and acres and acres of land for your dog to run around. So day passes as well as season memberships are super popular popular there and it can get very, very busy in the summer. So just know that ahead of time. You gotta get there early or else you might be parking outside of the park and walking in, which I mean, if it's summer, beautiful day, there probably shouldn't be an issue with walking. But if you have kids and strollers, it can be a little bit cumbersome. For Chatfield Reservoir, they do allow motorized boats, which is one of the main draws. So you'll see a lot of water skiing, people out on boats, tubing, tanning, hanging out on the beach. And you can even dine at the Marina's floating restaurant that's there. Or I've seen a ton of people grill on the beach and essentially hang out all day. Chatfield State Park is about 30 minutes away from Denver and it is very much worth the drive. You can also see the beautiful mountains in the background too. Moving on to lake number five is Farrell Lake and Duck Lake. There is a historic boathouse that was built in 1882 that's in the background. And then from the City Park Golf Course, you actually have the best view of Denver. It's probably one of the most photographed views of Denver. It'll have the lakes in the front, the boathouse, and then the skyline as well as the mountains. Absolutely gorgeous view. One of the main draws for me for City Park is when there is jazz in the park. So they are playing at the awning that is overlooking the lake and then everybody is just surrounded with picnic baskets, volleyball courts, waiting for the jazz to start. And that is a weekly thing that happens every Sunday evening. And it essentially goes, I believe from six o'clock until sundown. Parking is also free there, but please pay attention to the signs because sometimes you will need a permit in order to park in certain areas. So just expect to walk because there's not really a designated parking lot. Actually, I stand corrected. There's a little bit of parking, but I would just plan on walking, parking amongst the houses that are right across the way if you are going to jazz in the park. But if you go during the day and actually enjoy the water, you can rent paddle boats in the shape of swans. You can play on the playground that's right nearby. And of course, there's a Denver Nature and Science Museum down the way. And if you are walking around the water, I was walking a dog that I was watching and I looked over at the zoo that is right next door and all of a sudden there was elephants. It was so bizarre because it was in the middle of February. Wouldn't expect to see elephants in City Park, but the lake is right next to the zoo as well. Moving on to the sixth lake, we have Bear Creek Lake, which is actually made up of three different lakes. There is Little Soda Lake, which is used by a privately owned water ski company. There's Big Soda Lake, which has a swim beach and allows non-motorized watercraft. And then you have Bear Creek Lake, which allows motorized boating in the summer and is used for fishing as well. So Bear Creek Lake is on the way to the mountains. If you're taking Sixth Avenue, you're gonna have to cut down in order to get to the lake. And it is on the border of Lakewood and Morrison, right in between. And then parking at Bear Creek is $10 a day. All right, so those are the top six lakes that you can find in the Denver metro area. And I told you that there would be a bonus. I decided to throw in one of my favorite lakes that's in the mountains and it's called Grand Lake. So Grand Lake is the largest and deepest natural lake in Colorado. It is free to go to that lake. I don't think you could actually walk around it. It is giant, but you can park nearby for free and just enjoy the ambience. I actually went there for a girls weekend. We rented a cabin that was nearby and then we got to rent a boat as well. We went on the other side of the marina. The scenery is absolutely beautiful. You have the mountains right there and we just parked the boat and swam a little bit hung out on the rocks and then also we stopped downtown and they have an adorable sweet little downtown that kind of has historic mountain vibes to it they have two full service marinas at Grand Lake and I would also recommend if you're going please go in the summer because the temperature difference in the mountains is significant and so we went in the middle of the summer and we had our swimsuits on and everything and we needed a sweatshirts and blankets while we were actually riding on the boat because there was a little bit of overcast as well as wind and we got pretty chilly, but absolutely highly recommend doing a weekend getaway or maybe just drive up for the day and visiting Grand Lake.
If you'd like to see another video on lakes that I would recommend in the mountains, please comment below. And as always, if you have any real estate needs in the state of Colorado, I would be more than happy to help you. So please reach out with my contact information. I would be honored to help guide you in locations that would be best for you or activities to do while you're here. I'll be seeing you next week. Thank you.